Here we have an Asus laptop, a different breed of Asus laptop. I'm used to working on those big ROG gaming motherboards. This one here is not as big. It's a small board. It's not a small board, maybe a medium sized board. But if you compare it with the ROG gaming boards, they are usually red in color and much bigger. Or if you compare it with something like this, you can tell the board is a lot smaller. So we're gonna call it a different breed of Asus laptops. It does not power on. Right now, I do not know if those motherboards, this one here, if it suffers from the same problem as in the ROG boards, the red boards. But we're gonna have to find out. Right now, the board does not power on, no signs of life, no lights, nothing. Completely dead. Usually on ROG laptops, if you plug the charging cable in and the motherboard has a short, the charging adapter will power off. It will stop supplying voltage. That's not the case here. I plugged in the cable, and if we measure voltage on the cable, is it zero or it's 19 volts, 19.6. So that tells us that the board may not have a short circuit. That's my understanding and experience working on ROG gaming laptops, or sometimes Dell laptops. But if you check here, let's go to the area where you connect the charging cable right here. And if we measure next to that connector, you see two MOSFETs. I'm usually interested in the second MOSFET on the drain, meter in diode mode. And look at this, we have a short. We have a short circuit. So we have a short circuit on the power MOSFET and the charging adapter did not shut itself off. That's why I call this a different breed of Asus laptops because usually on Asus laptops, the charging adapter will shut itself off, but it's not the case here. So we know that we have a short. If we plug the charging cable right here, we should see 19 volts on the drain of the first MOSFET. We should see 19 volts on the source of the first MOSFET. And the same goes for the second MOSFET, source and drain. And gate will be a little bit higher. So if we measure here, in voltage mode, not in diode mode, we get 19.63. If we measure on the source, zero. If we measure on the gate, zero. Of course, we're gonna get zero here. We're gonna get zero here and zero here. Okay, so zero is everywhere except for the drain of the first MOSFET. So we know that we have a short. What do we do in this case? We do like we've always done. We're gonna inject voltage. Let me connect my ground probe. And we're gonna inject voltage at the drain of the second MOSFET. And then monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. So if we inject voltage on the drain, I'm gonna point my probe, inject 1.2 volts, and right off the bat, voltage injection tool is drawing two amps. So something must be getting hot on the board. Right there, you see it? Right over here. Let's go under the microscope. I'm gonna point my probe on that hot area, and right over here. It could be one of those two caps that is causing the short. Which one? I do not know. But if I wanna guess, I would go with the first one on the bottom because I do see a crack right here. So we can start with this one. Or I can even use the atomizer, spray some flux powder, inject voltage and see where flux melts. Maybe we can do so now. So I can show you how the atomizer works. The atomizer looks something like this. Press five times to activate. Okay, and then we're gonna press and hold the button and you see a steady blue LED. And we're gonna spray the area with flux powder. 
Okay. All right. So we sprayed enough flux powder on the board. Let's take a look under the microscope. And I honestly forgot where we were looking at. I think right here, because I told you about the crack, possible crack. It may not be a crack. So we have flux powder on here. Now, if we inject voltage, whatever component is causing the short, the flux powder is going to melt over it. And we can pinpoint which component is causing the short. And I'm doing this so I can show you how the atomizer is used. I could have easily removed cap one. If it's not causing the problem, I'll put it back and I'll remove cap two. But imagine we have an area that has 30, 40 capacitors. All of them are close to each other. Then the atomizer will come in very handy. So let's go ahead and inject voltage on the drain of the MOSFET. And we're going to monitor those two caps. Which one is it? Bottom one. Look at how snowy the bottom one got. Flux is melting on it. Probably not enough heat, and that's why you do not see a big difference, but you do see how that cap got snowy. We're going to use our hot tweezers with the help of hot air because that's one big cap. And hot air is currently on low temperature and low airspeed because I was working on a Minimax tuner, a two-layer board, and I did not need to have 500 degrees Celsius on the hot air station, but we did it. Now we're going to check and see if we still have a short. Okay, we're going to go to diode mode, and do we still have a short? And the short is gone. Beautiful. We are reading 0.35. It's going to go up to probably 0 0.45 as the board cools down. But right now the board is a little bit hot. And 0 0.37, 0 0.372, 374, 37. Perfect. Perfect. We did it. Apply flux. Fume extractor on. I mean, it's like you're driving a plane. I need to switch on my soldering iron machine and my hot air station machine and my fume extractor. And I need to press the button to record. And I need to press the buttons for the transmitter and receiver of my microphone. 6,000 buttons you need to press to make all this happen. And the light, of course. You cannot forget the light. It's like a pilot. And you wonder why the pilot or why the aircraft has so many buttons. I believe that's a size 805 SMD component. Based on my experience working on the other ASUS motherboards. We can use our hot tweezers. Why am I using the regular tweezer? Let me use our hot tweezers. And I do not even need hot air because we have flooded solder, which melts at a much lower temperature than unleaded. Beautiful. Okay. Very nice. All right, beautiful. Now, if we plug the charging adapter again. Hello, hello. Yes, microphone is working. I constantly have to check if we are recording, if the microphone is good. All right, and now if we check on the power MOSFETs, maybe we can do this so you can see what I'm doing. And we go to voltage mode, 
MOSFET number one, drain, we should read 19.63. Okay, 19.6. We are reading 19.6. I'm reading one volt. Nice. The adapter is reading one volt. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Why is the adapter reading one volt now? It didn't go into protection mode when we had the short. Now we do not have a short and the adapter went to one volt. I unplugged and replugged and now we have 19 volts. Let's plug that adapter one more time and let's check and see. Drain on this MOSFET. Why? What's happening? Okay, something weird is happening. Let's measure. Do we still have a short? We just measured and we read zero point 37 voltage drop, so we do not have a short. But well, I'm gonna measure one more time. And we don't have a short, look at this, 0 0.44 voltage drop. Perfect. 0 0.44 is perfect. Unless there's something wrong with the power adapter, with the charger. Let me grab another charger and I'll be back. Okay, so I have one here. So something weird is going on because this one is reading zero volts. Could it be my power outlet? Zero volts. I'm gonna grab another one. So I was not able to find exactly the same adapter, ASUS adapter, but I do have a generic one right here, that should work. I just wanna test to see if we have a problem with the charging adapter or if we still have a problem somewhere on the circuit board. Right now we do not have a short anymore on the power MOSFET. So we're gonna use this generic one and we have a lot of tips for this one. We sell this laptop charging kit on our site and we are using the same one. Let's plug it in and let's measure. Is 19 volts passing through? If we measure here, the first MOSFET, yes, yes. <laughs> so the problem is the adapter and not the motherboard. Let's measure at the source of the first MOSFET. And yes, 18.58. If we measure at the source of the second MOSFET, the one we had a short on, 19.26. And if we measure the drain, 19.26. That's it, the job is done. Laptop is fixed. What are the chances that we had two bad adapters? And we had to try a third one to confirm that the problem was the adapter. I'm gonna give this to Big Bus to reassemble and test and I'll be back to finish the video. Okay, so we reassembled the laptop and I was informed that both adapters are actually ours. I thought the first one was the customer's, but it was not. So I threw both of them away. Let's go ahead and plug this generic power adapter. The customer did not mail his power adapter along with the laptop. We're gonna plug this one and we see an LED on the side here. Now those laptops may take a few seconds to power on. The fan is spinning right there. And let's wait.
right there. Laptop is on. BitLocker. BitLocker recovery. All right, so the laptop is working and the job is done. We're gonna invoice the customer and mail it back to him. Okay, so we have a Mercedes-Benz key fob here. And this one is coming from John. Saw your video online. I live in a small town and there are no Benz dealers here. Can you fix my key? The unlock button fell off. I own a 1999 CLK320. This is my only key. Here are two additional numbers you can reach me at. Please let me know how much. Can I put it on a credit card or just send you a check? Or COD? I hope you can help. I have been without a vehicle for weeks. Now trying to get this fixed. That's the only key fob for the customer. And the customer cannot use his vehicle because he cannot get another key fob. And even if he did try to go to a Benz dealership, Benz dealership are not going to be able to provide him with a key this old, 1999. I think Benz dealer, as I was told by many customers, they only provide key fobs for vehicles 2001 and above or maybe 2002 and above. So even if he did find a dealership, he's not going to be able to get his hands on a key fob unless we can fix this key fob for him. If you are able to get a key fob from a Benz dealership, you're looking to pay around six, seven hundred dollars. That's how Benz make their money. For this key fob, as much as I like to do it now, I'm not going to be able to because it's not expedited and we have a lot of expedited devices in the queue that I need to get done. So maybe we'll work on this one in the future. And that's it.